Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. In today's video, we're looking at another small large block ship, and this one is called Basic Ship, which is this lovely thing right here. So this is a small atmospheric and hydrogen powered ship that features a very small interior of all the basics you need to survive in survival mode, it's like a survival kit, and it even has a drilling system, which is just below here, which will deploy itself and then go into a automatic mining sequence where it will essentially trawl itself along the ground, picking up all the stone or all the ice, depending on where you are. Yes, we just come all the way around to here. We'll press F10, find it in the spawn menu, then we'll have a quick look around the outside. So here it is. This thing is 256 large blocks using the Sparks of the Future and Decorative Block Number 1 DLC packs. It features no mods, but it does have two scripts, which are Whip's Planetary Compass, and the automatic LCD screen script. So we'll give this a thumbs up. If you want to see all the information about it, it's all written on the Steam Workshop page. We'll just come all the way down to here, to the very front here. I'll tell my character to bugger off, there we go. And then we'll have a quick look around the outside. So at the very front here, this is what we get. We've got a lovely glass bridge where we can see a flight seat to fly this thing around. Surrounding that, we've got some lovely yellow and white blocks that come down onto some hydrogen thrusters. Hydrogen thrusters are one of two thrusters that appear on this ship. You can see on the left and right hand side, we do have some atmospherics. As we move all the way around the side here, we're going to see a spotlight who will light up the darkness, a camera sitting on the side to make sure we can fit through a tight area and not scrape the blocks or damage the thrusters. If we come all the way over to here, we've got a bed block where we can see a programmable block sitting right behind it. And just below here, a large hydrogen tank to make sure we've got plenty of fuel to fly this thing around in. As we move around the side there and dropping down to here, we've got a hydrogen engine to give ourselves some more power, and we can see a large cargo container, because we do have a mining system on here, and it will get filled up with stone or ice, depending on what you want. On the side here, we've got our Sparks of the Future DLC pack skins for our atmospheric thrusters. Then moving all the way around to here, we've got a landing gear to drop ourselves down on, even more hydrogen thrusters, and at the very back here, we've got two timer blocks, come all the way around to here, where we've got some LCD screens with a lovely logo on it. And at the very back, this is what we get. We've got three atmospheric thrusters to push us around. We can see our drill sitting right there, which has been attached on via a hinge. Because once we're ready to deploy this, it'll fold all the way down, and the vehicle will automatically shuffle itself forwards, and will trawl along the ground, collecting up all the resources. Yes, we can see our landing gears right there. We've got a connector to connect this thing up and to drop off anything we don't need or even just to unload and load up cargo. Then moving towards the front there, there is our hydrogen tank, which has been covered up by some catwalks. And we can see a few lights to light up the darkness. If you were to come up and above past our bridge, all the way up to here, this is what we get on the very top. We've got some window blocks to appear inside the gyroscope. We've got a doorway to get in and out. We've got two basic refineries sitting up right next to it and a parachute hatch just in case things go horribly wrong and you need to come down to the ground safely. Moving towards the back, we've got an ore detector, a beacon, we see the tops of our lovely atmospheric thrusters and another parachute hatch. There is the drill sitting right down there and there is the back atmospheric thrusters in their lovely yellow glory. Now that's a very brief look around the basic ship and it does look fantastic with how basic it is. It's a very good use of the DLC packs and it's a very good use of how everything's been set up. So now what I'll do is grab hold of my character, who is now on the ground, and we're going to fly all the way up to the top and have a quick look on the inside. So walking over to here, we've got ourselves a doorway to open up and drop down. We'll have to manually close it because we do not have an auto door and airlock script, but we can always add one in if we wanted to. This is what we get. Turning around to the back, we've got a cargo access to drop stuff off or even pull stuff out depending on what we need. Turning around, we do have a survival kit over here where we can recharge ourselves and to respawn ourselves. And on this side, we've got ourselves a cryopod for an even quicker recharge or even just to trap your friends in. We can see a programmable block sitting right behind this bed where if we edit it, we'll find our automatic LCD screen script. Then we come around to the opposite side here, get the exact same setup, but this time we shall have the planetary compass script. Turning around and looking towards the front, we've got an LCD screen on our left and right hand side with our ore summary and ingot summary. And on the opposite side, we then got our ship status, which shows our power, hydrogen, oxygen, and our cargo used. If we were to walk all the way to the front here, we've got ourselves a compass right there. Then looking around, this is the view we get. 
So we're getting into the seat. So I'm bringing up the HUD. This is what we get for our controls. What I'll do is now just switch this back to a ship. Coming into the free camera and pressing number one, this will turn off our atmospheric thrusters around the ship. So we're completely reliant on our hydrogen. Turning them back on and pressing number two, this will turn off most of our hydrogen thrusters around the ship, except for the ones underneath. This is perfect for when we're nice and heavy and our cargo container is full and we need that extra lift to keep us off the ground. Pressing number three, this will turn off the hydrogen thrusters underneath the ship. So if we're nice and light and don't have anything in our containers, we can just forgo using hydrogen altogether. Number four is from manual controls over our gyroscopes. It's coming to here and pressing number four. This will then make it so we can't move no matter how much I move the mouse. Then switching it back on, we resume our normal controls. Number five and six is for our parachutes, where number five is a toggle for the auto deploy on and off. And number six is for manual control to open and close it. Number seven is to close the door on top, so we can press that to open it and then close it. And number eight is to view our cameras on the side there. So we can get a good view all the way forwards. Number nine is to lock and unlock our landing gear. And then switching to tab number two, this is more for our drilling and for our refining. So number one is for our O2 H2 generator on and off. Number two is for our hydrogen engines on and off. Number three is for our batteries to auto or recharge. And number five, oh, there goes the parachutes. Yes, number five is for our drilling sequence, but I'll leave that till last. Coming into first person view and looking to my left, we then got some script controls to view this up and down. So pressing number seven, we'll move up. And pressing number eight, we can move this LCD screen all the way down. So there you go. And number nine is to turn on and off our landing gear. So now that we're ready, we can go find a nice flat piece of surface, which will, oh, let me just go and turn off our, there we go. We just come down to the ground. Damn parachutes trying to interrupt everything. We're going to drop ourselves down. I'm going to lock myself in place. And now I'm going to press number five. So I'm just going to zoom all the way in like so. Pressing number five. We'll then start our mining sequence. The drill will fold all the way down to the ground. And we'll start mining away all the resources. It's not going to be good for going deep. Because it does have a very limited depth that you can go. And it appears to have broken itself. No idea how that happened. That's actually quite an odd thing. It just sort of disconnected itself. Oh well, we're just going to delete that and spawn in a brand new one. Alright, so here we go again. We're just going to drop ourselves to the ground. Like so. Switch to tab number two. We're going to press number five. And the drill should start up. Not too sure what actually happened there. I think it's just Lord Clang just wanted to disconnect it. Yeah, so now just come to the ground. And then once it gets all the way down to here, we'll then start to lift up and it'll start to move us forwards. So there we go. It's going to slowly drag ourselves along the ground there, picking up all the resources and then putting it into our basic refineries or even O2H2 generators, depending on what you're picking up. And it'll just keep going like this until it reaches the defined time in the timer block. So pressing I coming into here and finding the timer block. There we go. It will go for whatever time you set in here. So it's currently defaulted to one minute. So we've got 30 seconds more of it mining along like it is right now. And once it's all done, it'll pack itself up and then we can fly away and slowly let the refineries do their job, refining up all the precious stone. Well, it's not really precious, is it? It's just very useful early on in game. So while this is going along, we can come into here and take a look at our inventory. We've got some 5.5k stone that's very rapidly being turned into very useful resources. Coming over to here, and there we go, 42k over there. And we appear to have finished our sequence. And now the drill has been shuffled all the way back up to its default position. And we'll be ready to fly this thing away and go on our merry way. So one final thing to do is a quick thruster test. Moving forwards, this is what we get. We've got some fantastic speed thanks to all of our thrusters pushing us along. Coming to a stop though, we are a lot slower. So we may need to do a 180 to stop ourselves in a more reasonable time. There we go. Moving left and moving right. We've got some nice speed with that. And then moving down and then moving up. we got some fantastic speed moving up. Look at that go. We can just shoot ourselves into space with this. Fantastic stuff with that. But yes, wiggling my mouse around. We've got a nice lot of weight on here. It's not too responsive. It's very meaty controls, but it's not too unresponsive. They can be a bit frustrating when trying to maneuver it. Absolute final thing to do to finish off this video is of course slam ourselves down into the ground to leave a nice hole and a wreckage. 
So yes, there'll be a link to the chip in the description below if you do wish to download and play around with it yourself. Highly recommend you do because it is a nice basic chip to play with, especially because it's got a mining sequence that can be very useful. Yes, thank you all for watching, and I'll be back with another video some point soon. Oh, let's go, let's go quickly see the mess we've made here. There we go, there is nothing left of that, just one atmospheric thruster. Oh, apparently it's still powered. Yes, thank you all for watching, and I'll be back with another video some point soon. Bye bye.